Ok. <coughs> Yeah, I didn't stay. Did you stay the letters? Yeah, they're all stayed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Micah is... Micah is really neat. Uh, oh, I've already told everybody who I am. We are the First Southern Baptist Church of Yaka. Uh, we are... This is our Wednesday night Bible study. We've been studying the Minor Prophets And for the last several weeks, we've been on Micah. We are now on the last chapter of Micah, but we didn't get through it. Uh, It was eight pages long just to get through it. And I was fearful of Barbara. So if I had written eight pages, actually Sandy's the one that stopped me. Good, I'm proud of her. (laughs) Uh, Nonetheless, uh, I'm really enjoying Micah. For some reason, Micah is so contemporary in that he's speaking from the Old Testament straight through into the New. And so many times people miss that transition between what's in the Old Testament versus what's in the New. And I've known some Christians that say, well, I never read the Old Testament. And I know some people that say, well, the Old Testament isn't pertinent. Um, then we have some people that can't get out of the Old Testament and realize God's grace. So the truth of the matter is, it's like a tree. We talk about fruit that grows on the tree, but if you cut the roots off of that tree, you won't get a fruit. We need to understand, if we want to understand the full tree, we need to understand the roots of the tree, the branches of the tree, and then produce the fruit from the tree. So. That's what the Old Testament is like. But this particular prophet here speaks out from the Old Testament and it's so meaningful to us today that we are going to do a continuation of this study on Sunday morning as we speak of the rapture of the church and the reason for the rapture of the church. And I've spoken on the rapture so many times and Micah t- tells us the reason for the rapture from the Old Testament. Uh, tonight we're going to see the heart of, of the prophet. We, we read these prophets and they're, they're preaching doom and gloom. In this case, it's the uh, northern nation of Israel that we're talking about. Uh, remember there was a split in, in Israel, the ten tribes in the north and of course the uh, two tribes in the south which was Judah. This prophet addressed both of those uh, nations that were going to be going through tribulation. In fact, the ten tribes in the north have never come out of that tribulation. Uh, They are now known as the lost ten tribes of Israel. They're not lost to God, though, and we've talked about that many times. Uh, Read with me, if you will, my Roman numeral number one, and... It's called The Remorse of Micah. Tonight we're going to see the heart of a prophet. Remember, as these prophets are produced, are speaking of doom and gloom, there's no out for them. There's no out. There's no rapture in the Old Testament. There's, we, we in the New Testament look forward to uh, skipping out of town, so to speak, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And we're actually promised an out. Through. We're going to study that in a little bit, a lot on Sunday, but a little bit even tonight. But uh, there's no out for these people. Remember last week about hearing the rod? And they said, uh, these people, these wise men, they're going to hear the rod. That rod is judgment. And so here's the prophet preaching this doom and gloom. And he knows he's part of that group of people that's going to be attacked by the Assyrians. Uh, He knows he's part of the the group of people that may well give his life or be taken into captivity. And, but he also knows that what he's saying is straight from the Word of God. He's the prophet of God and it's true. Many of the prophets of God whom we have studied lived in a time of great judgment. All of the true prophets spoke of the impending Assyrian attack and warned the people to repent. 
you know, we, we took, this is our sixth or seventh uh, minor prophet, and they're all on that same thing. Israel's going down, Israel's going down, Israel's going down to the nation of Assyria. To re we know from biblical and secular history that neither the northern nation of Israel or the southern kingdom of Judah hearkened to the words of the prophets. 722 BC, the northern tribe uh, of Israel fell to Assyria. Also in 586 BC, the southern kingdom uh, fell to Babylon. Now when these nations were conquered, what happened to the prophets? Think about that. Did they just get off scot-free? Did God somehow, if they took the whole kit and caboodle into the northern uh, to, into, into the north, the Assyrians? Do they just say, oh, you're a prophet of God, you get to stay here? No. They were taken captive or they were killed. When these nations were, uh, what happened to those who did repent? Remember, uh, Micah is asking the people to return to God, to repent, uh, get their hearts right with God. You think some of the people listened to him? Of course they did. So there's a good amount of people that repented. Uh, and the question might be asked, well, why did God still bring judgment? Because judgment had been pronounced. They were given many, 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 many chances to uh, not undergo judgment, but as a nation, they were falling short of the glory of God. And we've talked about this many times. I call it corporate punishment or individual punishment. God deals with us on two levels. Uh, unfortunately, we're living in a nation that will someday be judged. But again, we're blessed. We have that uh, get out of jail free card. We have a rapture that's promised us. But it wasn't promised to the prophets of old. It's only the church, by the way, it's only the church that has that get out of jail free card. Uh, those saints that give their life to Jesus after the rapture, they're called the tribulation saints. They, they'll, they'll wind up in heaven, and by the way, so, so, will the, so will the prophets wind up in heaven, okay? But they aren't the church. There is this to be either around the throne or God's got special jobs for them in heaven. We don't know what they all are, but we know that the church is a very special entity. Here we go. The truth is, when a nation falls, the innocent falls with that nation. In last week's study, Micah cries out to the city and to the man of wisdom in the city. According to that verse, Micah says that they will hear the rod. Do you remember that verse from last week? They will hear the rod. And that rod is judgment. They will not only hear the rod, they're going to feel the rod. Okay? Okay. But they're going to know who appointed it. That's the important thing. If you're going through judgment, corporate judgment, if you want to call it that, national judgment, and you know that your heart has repented, and you know that God has you in the palm of his hand, so to speak, you can rest as your enemy slays you. And believe me, that has happened many, 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 many times. I remember the pictures of, of Christians lined up over there in uh, Iran. And they, they had them out there, and they just killed them. Yeah. They cut off their heads, remember? Yeah. And, and we're sitting here in our, our cozy little house going, why doesn't God help them? Trust me, the minutes their heads came off, it was right back on when they opened their eyes again. Was it scary? Yeah, it was scary. But each and every person, two million people, uh, from the death of Jesus uh, through the first century, two million people were executed for their faith in Jesus Christ. All they had to do when the Romans came to them and said, do you believe? They'd say, no. Oh, you can keep your head. But think what faith it takes, knowing that you're going to become a human torch or you're going to be fed to the lions. And so... Uh, we're sitting here in a pretty pretty safe little environment, 
But people, you're not going to like what I have to say tonight. Because that rod is judgment. When we're looking at the Old Testament, it was judgment coming their way. And that, that judgment was the, the nation of Assyria. And the Assyrians were famous for skinning people literally alive. Uh, they had some of the most horrific tortures. Uh, and the rod of judgment, here's the thing, was appointed by the Lord. So, and the Lord, that L-O-R-D there, that's the covenant God of Israel. It is sometimes hard to understand this God, how he can bring judgment against his people in such a way. But guess what? He's got a plan. And we're going to get through that, to that plan. The good, the bad will go down together, but God will sort these out on his side of eternity. We forget who's in charge of life and death. It's not the man with the sword. It's the man, Jesus Christ, the God, Jesus Christ. And he'll sort everything out on his side of eternity. And otherwise we have no faith. If you don't believe that, we have no faith. In tonight's study of the seventh chapter of Micah, the reader will see a piece of both the heart and the mind of God's prophet. Micah was in full prophetic mode in 722 BC. That's when the Assyrians conquered the northern tribes of Israel. This was sort of the middle point of his prophetic timeline. He, he prophesied all the way to uh, 699 BC. So he would have been there in 701 BC when the Assyrians also attacked the southern nation of Judah. He was there. Do you remember that story? You read over in 2 Kings, that story where the Assyrians were all out, camped outside the little town of the town, the little country of, of Judah, and God worked some sort of miracle. Uh, we don't know, maybe he gave them all COVID or something. But they began attacking each other, and 240,000 Assyrians died without ever attacking Judah. They were camped outside the camp. We don't know what God did. Uh, it said that one angel killed them. <laughs> so angels are pretty powerful. Um, but he was there. He saw the Assyrians in. He wasn't there, of course, when uh, in 586, but he was prophesizing about Babylon. Remember, we talked about that in chapter 5, I believe it was, where he said that Judah will go to Babylon. <coughs> but anyway, uh, where was it? However, Judah was attacked in 701 BC also by the Assyrians, and Micah saw it all. He lived through it all, and many of his contemporaries and followers, however, died even though they had repented. Tonight's scripture in chapter 7 will begin with a note of sorrow. Mark, Micah has prophesied of gloom and doom, and he has possibly lived through that gloom and the doom. Uh, he has seen exactly what God said would happen, happen. Chapter 7 begins with despair, but chapter 7 will end with praise for the Lord. Unfortunately for tonight, <coughs> we're not going to get to the very end end of uh, chapter 7. There was just too much. And as I'm sitting there, I get up early in the morning when my mind's real clear and I just keep writing and writing and writing and writing. And when Sandy wakes up a few hours later... That's I'm, not true. Pastor shouldn't spend true. That's not true. One time I slept in. Oh, she did. <laughs> <laughs> well, five o'clock's pretty late when I get up at three. But uh, anyway, that's when I, otherwise, I, I have to do all my writing right out there with the table. Then the babies come in and they go, hey, Papa, and they want to snap my suspenders and, and talk. And Kayla comes out and wants to talk. And uh, so I like to have all this stuff. Got to get up early. Got to get up early, yeah. And uh, so, no, Sandy is an early bird riser, too. Hey, I always know I can call your house. It's, on, it's 6 o'clock. I know Barbara's up. am. Barbara's up. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey, we got these shots in, in our back. Sandy got some and I got some. Okay. And uh, mine's actually working. I'm walking without a cane. Um, my 
pain levels down to about a two instead of an eight. You know, I'm not <coughs> my keys on storage right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, that stuff amps you. They're called uh, epidural, um, not cortisone, steroids. But we came home that night and couldn't sleep. Or this. So, then you should have been right. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 did, I did get up. I finally got up and started writing. Of... And that, but that was last week. Okay, that was all last week. Pastor needs to stop visiting his drug Well, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the next night, Sandy wake, or next day, Sandy has this bad headache. So, the epidermal way in office for me, I just want to get some sleep. But Sandy has a headache, so we call the doctor and says, call the doctor if you have a headache. So she calls the doctor, they call her back and say, drink as much Red Bull as you can. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, Anybody know what oh, Red Bull is? I've never had one in my whole life. <laughs> so she drinks this Red Bull all day long, she's supposed to lay down on her I back, kind of like you, down lay down on her back red with the Red Bull, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that like that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, she they didn't, didn't lay tell down. Me that. She, she, <laughs> she didn't lay down, but she did drink the Red Bull. So two o'clock that night with no sleep, she wakes me up. Says, "Come on, let's get going. Let's, we got all this stuff to do." That was last week. <laughs> Chris, this week, Chris anyway, Steele said, be nice. I was up back to us trying Chris to say. Steele said, "Be nice to Sandy. She loves you." Who said that? Oh. Chris Steele. Oh, Chris Steele. <laughs> hey, Chris is home. Uh, and uh, well, you know, 4 a.m. You can call Barbara. You can probably yeah. call Chris Steele. So <laughs> you got plenty of people to talk to other than Sandy at 4 a.m. Well, <laughs> Sandy's usually awake. I, I mean, she really is. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's nice to get all the typing done early too, because the kids come out. Anyway, back to this. We're going to see a piece of the prophet that we don't usually see. Usually the prophet is, you know, like this, pointing the finger at the people. But tonight we're going to see Paul. Oh. I guess we're getting a report. I guess. Kick these. Huh? Kick the thing off for a minute. We're gonna go off, off, off for a minute. There you go. You gotta turn. Yeah. There's a lot of people in here. There's a lot of people that need to live in here. Yeah. Hey, don't wanna broadcast right now. No, no, not your place. Not my place. Uh, we've had some some sadness, and uh, we've prayed through it. We'll get back onto our study now. Read Micah 7 1. This is Micah the prophet speaking. Notice the personal pronoun. Woe is me, for I am like those who gather summer fruits. You know what a summer fruit is? Summer fruit is way after the harvest. And there might be a few little things left, berries or whatever, left on, on the vine. But uh, very little fruit. It's like those who glean vintage, like those who glean vintage grapes, okay? There's no cluster. Or people would pick one, one or two little grapes off of the vine. But there's no clusters to eat of the first ripe fruit which my soul desires. Micah is talking, he's talked to us in the past, past uh, chapters about what's going to happen to the nation Israel and of Judah. And he's seeing this either happen, he's remembering as it happened, or he's, he's so into what God said that he knows it's going to happen. But he says, woe is me. This prophet is not shouting out to the people now. He's personally experiencing the wrath to come, or the wrath that had already come. We don't know uh, when this was written. Maybe he wrote it as, 
as the uh, 722 when he was in the southern kingdom and he knew what was happening to his people. Woe is me. There is no longer a spring or early harvest. There are no clusters left on the vines. Micah compares the destroyed countryside as a summer harvest. A summer harvest or late harvest produces very little fruit. This prophet had lived through a time when the nations had been financially successful. Remember prior, prior to everything else, the reason Israel had gone astray was because God had blessed them so extensively. Uh, there was a time of prosperity, uh, but rather than praising God for that prosperity, the people lied, they cheated. We read a lot about that in the, in the past chapters. They stole, they even committed murder. As the prophet looked upon the land, on the people, he cries out to God. He says, woe is me. As I just said, it's not clear whether or not Micah is writing the scripture in remembrance, or he simply knows that he knows that he knows. And what he knows is that this fruit, this fruitful land has come to an end. God even cursed the land when this happened. <clears throat> Micah 6 or 7, 2 through 4. Now listen to this. The faithful man has perished from the earth, and there is no one upright among the men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. He's giving a description here of what has come of the nation Israel. The faithful man has perished. And there's not a single upright man that he can think of. Everyone hunts his brother with a net that they may successfully do evil with both hands. I've underlined that line, both hands. Uh, so many times we see this with politicians, sleight of hand people. The idea is that uh, they're cheating somebody. They're doing it with one hand. They're cheating somebody with one hand and coming out looking good with the other hand, right? Well, the, the prophet is saying here, he's saying, they're doing it with both hands, right out in the open, and, and yet it, they're getting away with it. Oh, you know what I'm going with. They, that they may successfully do evil with both hands, right? in pure daylight. The prince acts, asks for gifts. The judge seeks bribes. And the great man utters his evil desires. So they scheme together. The best of them is like a briar. Which is it? The most upright is sharper than a thorn edge. The day of your watchman and your punishment comes. There's no more watchman. Nobody's watching over the nation Israel. Not the priest, not the... Uh, the leaders now shall be their perplexity. But see the heart of the of the prophet as he's saying this. It's, it starts with that undesirable uh, picture of fruit, and and Michael looks out into the world in which he lived, and he saw nothing but sadness. The faithful man had perished, and there was no one who was upright. Micah gives us a vision of evil that's being openly displayed. Evil is not even being concealed, and it's being done with both hands. Hmm. This is where I started writing. Is this not a picture of our nation today? Can you guys remember a time, not too many years ago, when People might have different sex preferences or whatever. They, and the homosexual would be a homosexual. But they kept that to themselves. That was their sexual whatever. Okay? I don't believe it aligns with God's word. I believe God comes out against it. But nonetheless, uh, something happened all of a sudden. We get these capital letters now. The LGBTQ. LGBTQ. Never heard of that before. There was a time when one's sexual orientation was private. 
Then one day people came, quote, out of the closet. Remember that term? Yeah. And they came out of the closet. And you see a little bit of it on TV here or there. And the then word, one day, yeah. what's that? And the word yay was, hey, this was a gay day. Oh, we had a and place. And now you don't say that. <laughs> oh, no, we, we had a, well, we didn't say it. No, that's the whole point. You know how you say it. These people have political clout. Then one day the people came out of the closet. Then on another day, parades were held and they called it pride. Yeah. <laughs> they walk into church and flaunt their sin. Yes. If, a short time later, this group now has strong political standings within our government. Don't kid yourself. They are a political entity now. A standing that influences even the gender of our small children. I'm not here putting down anybody's sexual preference. I'm not, okay? I may not agree with it, but I'm not putting it down. What I'm putting down is a, a scheme of thing that goes directly against God, okay? And a nation of, of values. <coughs> Surgical operations given to, our, to change our boys into girls and vice versa. Grown men are now dressing in provocative uh, dress, dresses or whatever, clothing, women's clothing, and dancing and flaunting evil sexual activities even in our public school. Uh, we now have a representative in, in the Navy to get more people coming out who is a transgender, uh, and it goes on and on and on. And this is all being done with two hands. And the sad part is, my goddaughter who raised her kids within the church. Her oldest daughter is going in for surgery. She is devastated. Yes. And welfare is paying Pain. for it. But Both they hands. Won't, but they won't pay for her 12-year-old daughter to be on insulin. Because they said she's a type 2 diabetic and not a type 1, and she's too young to be on insulin. Well, you might wrote, I wrote, welcome to the days of Micah. Welcome to the days in which we live. Okay? And it's going to get worse. Okay? <coughs> also, Israel's politics had become corrupt. The princes and the judges were asking for gifts. And a bribe. I am so happy tonight that this is not happening here in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> or within our country today. As you might know, today's high offices uh, are not plagued with stories of laptops or payments from our enemies to the leaders of a great, to our, lead the leaders of this great nation. Aren't you happy that we live in a, in a time where our leaders are upright? Yeah. No bribes. No payments. We're not a great nation anymore, Pastor. No. I'm so very glad that we can rest knowing that our leaders today would never sell this nation out. Because it was established, you know, as one nation under God. In reality, this nation of ours is just like Israel. And what I see in, when I read Micah, I'm, I'm seeing what's happening before our very eyes. A nation that's woke, not awake. This nation right here is headed for judgment. This nation and the world in which we live is at rapidly approaching the historical words of Jesus Christ. For then there shall be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. This scripture was given to us New Testament believers. This was long after, 700 years after Israel went into captivity. It's 600 years after Babylonian captivity. These are the words that Jesus said to the people in our 
generation. We are, we are in that, actually, we are in what's called the last days. Okay. I don't mean we're in the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. And Jesus was speaking to the people, in the last days, this is what's going to happen. Um, that's why on Sunday I'm speaking on the rapture. But I'm not speaking on the rapture because you've heard the rapture over and over and over again. I've written songs about it. But I'm speaking on the reason for the rapture. God has got to bring judgment. <clears throat> and when he brings that judgment, this nation will go down if it doesn't go down first. I'm not sure. There is nowhere in the Bible, unless somebody can really show it to me, um, naming this nation. There's no mention of, of some great nation over the pond that's going to come in and save Israel as they go through a time of Jacob's trouble. I, I've seen this. I know people have written books. Oh yeah, we're there. The eagle flew because we have an eagle. That's, that's really stretching it. This nation's not going to be there to help Israel. This nation's not even going to be able to help itself. And don't kid yourself. It's not going to be the next election that's going to pull this nation out. I wish it was. I really do. I love this nation. I fought for this nation. Friends died for this nation. There's very little difference between the days of Micah and the days in which we live. Micah writes, the day of your watchman and your punishment comes. I can most assuredly to say that our nation's punishment is also coming. Micah goes on in 5-6. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from, from her who lies in your bosom. For a son dishonors his father. Daughters rise against her mother. Daughter-in-laws against her mother. This is what's ha what was happening in Israel before they were taken into captivity. Daughter-in-laws against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Talking about spies in the house. Talking about people turning people in for this or that because they want to impress a government agency. That's already happening. With oh, kids, yeah. With kids turning their fathers and mothers in on different things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right in fact, it's encouraged by our leadership. Yeah. Uh, as Michael looks out into his world, he realizes that he couldn't even trust in a friend. Here, he said, woe is me. And he's looking at a summer harvest, okay? There's, there's not a, a, a person out there you can even trust. He says, don't trust in even a friend. Or you put your confidence in a companion. The wording is mixed with a, with a warning, adding even more doom and gloom. I mean, it's one thing to see a nation go through a, a period of time like uh, in the 30s, okay? They had financial hardships in the, in the 30s with the stock market falling. It was a horrible time. World War II, you know, World War I, World War II. Nations have horrible times. But here's what he's talking, he's talking about a personal relationship with people that you can't even trust. The dismal state of Israel was one of mistrust. Spies of the leadership were everywhere, and even family members could turn against family members. It says daughters would rise against their mothers. A man and his enemies are the men of his own household. Wow. I thought, wow, this actually happened in our household. Not with anybody living in the house. The recent COVID pandemic that we went through worldwide did something that changed our world. It did. Yeah. Uh, we have a daughter who won't even speak to us because we caught COVID. Because we weren't wearing the mask like we were supposed to do. The one that lives the shots. Yeah, we wouldn't get the shots. We wouldn't get the stuff. I, I heard so much about some people with, with oh, yeah. this church remained open and masks yeah. were optional. Yeah. We, we lost people in this we lost people in this church. Right. You guys know about that. And then if the COVID shot was so good, why did they have booster upon <laughs> booster upon yeah, yeah. But people's opinions split over issues of masks, home confinement, immunizations uh, that became mandatory and our daily lives, our daily living changed, didn't it? 
People were encouraged from high levels of government to enforce their regulations and even report family members who were not in compliance. We were pretty mild here. Anybody read whatever what happened over in uh, the Asian countries? China? China? Singapore. Singapore? Uh, what about, what about uh, Australia? Yeah. Australia? Oh, yeah. They were locked into their apartments. They could not come out. They were supposed to be delivered food, and the guy that was supposed to deliver it, they died, and so he was and, and what if they did? what if they did come out? They were captured? Yes. Put in prison? Yes. And, or, or colonies, you know, they had... Uh, so this was going on worldwide. It was going on somewhat in this nation, you know, but not, not as bad as it was going on worldwide. Um, where did I read? People were encouraged from high levels of government to enforce their regulations and report even family members who were not in compliance. In some countries, this lack of compliance resulted in imprisonment or isolated colonies. People were fired from their jobs and hotlines were set up by the government whereby people could report violations by the men of their own households. There's the quote. This is from Micah, 2,700 years ago. Men of their own household were reporting them. So I said as I read this, I'm going, wow. This, is, this hits home. A lot of times you read Old Testament prophecies and you're talking, oh yes, and they're worshiping uh, idols and they're doing this and they're doing that. And you go, it doesn't hit home with us. You know, we don't do that. We don't have idols, little wooden things. No, that's a whole other story because we do. Uh, yeah, we've got, we've got our own. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Do not be fooled. The writings of Micah 2,700 years ago are a picture of our world today. As we move closer and closer to a government controlled totalitarian system, Micah's words scream out at us. Have they cut me off yet? No, not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Micah says, here's the only out. Here's the only out. Because by the, it's, it's here with us. Here's the only out. It's the same out for Micah as it is for us. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. We forget the God that we serve. As I'm speaking on the rapture on, on Sunday, I'm speaking on a, on a technology that is far superior to anything that we can even think about. For God is going to call everybody, his entire church, in the twinkling of an eye. He's going to change them from flesh, earth, flesh, dirt, to whatever heaven's made out of, to a heavenly body, in a twinkling of an eye. And he's going to do it to the entire church, the entire world of believers, in this twinkling of an eye. Now that's technology. We think we're so great because we can we can take a, a, a piece of a of an animal and take that DNA and maybe ge regenerate that animal. They, you know they're growing chickens and stuff. Everybody says Kentucky Fried is not Kentucky Fried. It's, <laughs> I, don't know, I love it. Um, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Get away from Kentucky Fried. Bashes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bashes is good. I like bashes. Yes, it Much is. better than KFC. Mm -hmm. Popeyes. <laughs> the only solution to the sad state of the world in which Micah lived in that day was the same solution in the day in which we live. Okay? Remember last week uh, on Sunday I had this uh, stand and, or um, as a signpost and it, it said the Broadway and it said the narrow way oh, yeah. up on the screen. I got that from Micah six uh, eight. I never never got to Micah six eight. Okay. Micah knew he could not look to any situation from the world and find any hope. The world around him was corrupt, godless. His only hope was in the L O R D. Again, when you see L O R D printed that way, it is the covenant name of God. Micah had a contract. Micah had a covenant with L-O-R-D. Okay? Capital. Capital L-O-R-D. Uh, 
When we see a world crumbling like we do around us, when we see all that used to be normal, going back to that sexual thing too, all the stuff that used to become normal, uh, are, used to be normal, now it's becoming abnormal. Or when the abnormal is becoming normal, I should have said. When our political system becomes corrupt, so corrupt that we cannot even be sure who is right or who is wrong. We are lost in, in the world and there has no solution. Don't think that our next election will solve any of our problems. We must look to the Lord. We must wait for the God of our salvation. Exactly what Micah just said. We must wait for the God of our salvation. Judgment has already been pronounced against the world in which we live. You can either believe what I just said, that judgment has been pronounced, or you can read the last book of the Bible. Our only hope is in a God who will remove us before that day. Here's a scripture given that to us. We, talking about the church, we're not called to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians, right after the famous scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13, where it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are left alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Right after that, chapter 5, you read over, and it says, But we were not called to wrath. We were called to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Micah's hope, he didn't have a rapture, did he? Same God. Same God. The same love that God has for us, he had for Micah and for all those people who repented. In fact, he had the same love even for the people that he sent into captivity. We've talked a lot about that, how he someday is going to bring them back. How do I know this? Because there's going to be 144,000 from each tribe. Well, those tribes are gone. He's got to bring them back in order to fulfill what he said in the book of Revelation. But Micah didn't have that kind of promise. In fact, Micah would hear the rod. Micah would feel the rod. Woe is me, he says. <clears throat> Can you imagine the nation of Israel in front of all the other nations back in the days of Micah? And they had seen so much prosperity. They had their temple and they had the true and living God. And they miracles that God had done. He parted, parted the Red Sea as they went into the went into the land. He did miracle after a miracle. Fought battles. The battle belongs to the Lord. That song I love it. He fed uh, them day and night. He fed them day and night for 40 years and 40 nights. Miracles. 40 years or 40 days? 40, 40, 40. <laughs> fed them for 40 years. Did I say 40 days? No, no, you, you said, said years, years, but I'm thinking. But you said day and night. Well, oh, he fed them. He fed them. To, he fed them continuously for forty years, day and night. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There, okay. Okay. He, he kept them fed day and night. Is what I'm trying to say. Stop. Do not rejoice over me, my enemies. His enemies are saying, "Wow, you guys got this great and mighty God. We got these little, our gods, you know." <coughs> Our gods would never do that to us. So think about what the what the neighbors were saying, so to speak, as as this nation goes into captivity. They could see what was happening. They saw when when Israel was overrun. They saw when uh, Judah was overrun, and and they, they their enemies were over there cheering. Uh, but here. Micah says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. And, and we Googled that. We got right here. Most of the people want to interpret that in New Testament chronology. Okay? But what is Micah really talking about? If he falls, if he dies... 
It's going to arise. What did Micah believe in? Okay. <laughs> this is a scripture you can give it to your military. Though you fall, you're going to get right back up and you're going to win. Okay. But that's not how it's written here. It's written, when I fall, when I die, really, I will arise. And we all know what I'm talking about. The minute you close your eyes, if you belong to the Lord, you're going to open up. That didn't just happen with the New Testament. God will take care of them. Remember I read to you about the, all the martyrs? They're up unseen, up under the altar in chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. And all the martyrs are there from day one, really. Not just the martyrs from the Great Tribulation. And they're all, you're all seen in heaven by the, by the Apostle John as he wrote the book of Revelation. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the in, here, here, here. I will bear the indignation, that's a hard word for me, the indignation of the Lord. What's he talking about there? He knows he's a sinner. He, he knows that even though he's repented, he knows he's, he's a Jew. He knows that in that nation, he's part of that nation. So he's going to have to bear the indignation of the Lord, but he's still not worried about it because he knows the Lord will hear him. He has repented in his heart, and he knows that God is going to raise him because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light I will see his righteousness. I'm talking about this is after he dies. He's going to bear the indignation of the Lord and he will see his righteousness. Then she who is my enemy will see and shame will cover her who said to me, where is your Lord? Where is your God? My eyes will see her. Now she will be trampled down like mud in the streets. This, this scripture goes so far, far backwards and then back again so far forward. It, in the book of Revelation where we see these saints as they are around the altar of God in heaven. They're not the church. They're not the same group that, that the apostle John sees that are singing in the new song. They're singing an old song. They're singing, when will our blood be avenged, O Lord? And they're there in the presence of the Lord and saying, she's going to get trampled down like the mud, talking about all those other nations. By the way, how many people make it through on Broadway? How many people get through by going to Broadway? None. Jesus says, narrow is the, is the way and the brought to salvation, but broad is the way to destruction. I mean, it was God that said that. He must know. By the way, I could tell you exactly how many people from Israel will make it. If, this is a little <laughs> side trail, if we knew exactly how many people that have ever been born in Israel, if we knew that figure, and then we divided by one third, I could give you an exact number. But we don't know. But only one third of Israel, which is a pretty good size for a remnant, will make it into uh, the new heaven and the new earth. That's a pretty good number, though. Coming out of the Great Tribulation, uh, we, we know of the 144,000 that will make it, but there's also the resurrection of the nation of Israel, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. So that some are just raised up only to be judged, and they're dead. We have to wait, wait the, the great white throne judgment that happens at the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation. That's where all the great men in the entire world, everybody gets a resurrection. Everybody will stand before the Lord, except, of course, for the church. We're in that first resurrection. I'm, I'm rambling now. The enemies and surrounding nations will watch Israel and Judah go into captivity. They will say, where is your God? These pagan nations will see a God who is not protecting his people. Micah answers them by letting them know that when I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Micah's faith was not in a rapture. Micah's faith was in a resurrection. 
he would arise. If he was killed, he would be resurrected. If he was not killed, he would bear the indignation of the Lord. He'd been taken into captivity. Micah knew that even he as a prophet was a sinner. He knew from Isaiah that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, repeated by uh, Paul in the book of Romans. Listen to the words of Micah in verse 9. As Micah confesses his own sin, he states, God will plead my case. Who's going to plead our case? Who's going to plead Micah's case? It's not, is it not the same person that's going to plead our case? Why do you need your case pled if you don't have any sin? Because we all have sin. Yeah. But he said, God, who's going to plead the case for us? We've got one, on one hand, we've got the enemy going to say, look at this son of a gun, Wayne. You know? He wanted to go with eight pages tonight. Uh, he's a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I got Jesus going right there saying, no, give Barbara a Hesed-type love for Wayne. <laughs> tell, her, tell her to forgive him. And he passed it on to Sandy. Sandy said she just wouldn't type anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she just been typing them. Okay. So we got, I got an extra page out. <laughs> God will execute, God will plead my case, God will execute justice for me. These words are sounding almost like New Testament, aren't they? But they're written here in the Old Testament, coming from a minor prophet named Micah. God does not change. Our Savior is the same Savior as is He, as, as Savior, as is and was the Savior of the Old Testament. They didn't change God's as we move from the New to the Old. Same God. Yes, indeed, we are a church, and we are special people, and we are known as the bride of that same Savior. However, that Savior is the only Savior for all mankind. Micah knows this, and he knows those who are asking him, where is the Lord your God? These questions will one day be answered, and they will not like the answer. They will not like the answer because they will be trampled, as he wrote, they will be trampled down like mud in the street. That great tribulation that's headed our way isn't for, for us, the church. It's, it's for the world uh, to give a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. We don't need a revelation of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you know Jesus Christ as your personal <coughs> Lord and Savior. You don't need the book of Revelation. Well, I didn't say you shouldn't read it. But I remember that was some advice of Christian gave to me right after I got saved and I said, I'm going to read the end of the story. He said, don't do that. <laughs> he didn't even tell me to start in the book, beginning you of the Bible. what you get if you read the book of Revelation. Oh, you get blessings if you read the book of Revelation. We studied it here in this Bible study a year and a half. Yep. A year and a half it took to get us through that book. But we learned a lot. We learned a lot. But one day they will be trampled down like mud in the streets. He's talking about these other nations. You say, well, they all died way back then, did they? Is there not a resurrection for them? Is there not a great white throne resurrection coming their way at the end of all time when the great men from all times are resurrected? And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. They'll be trampled down like mud. <coughs> In that day, your walls are to be built. In that day, the decree shall go far and wide. In that day, they shall come to you from Assyria and from the fortified cities, for, from the fortress to the river and from the sea and to the mountains to the mountains. Yet the land will be desolate because of those who dwell in it and for the fruit of their deeds. Micah saying, in that day, when the time comes, you've got all these fortified cities. You've got nuclear bombs on this side and nuclear bombs on that side. When that day comes, all these weapons, a wall was a big weapon that protected you from the invading army. You've got all this protection. And in that day, however, the decree, God's decree, will go far and wide. In that day, says God, they will come for you from Assyria. God's going to name them. 
and the, from the fortified cities. From sea to sea and mountain to mountain. They're going to come onto that land and they're going to conquer you, my people. They're going to take you. This is punishment. God's bringing against his people. And for the fruit of their deeds. The people of Micah's days were no different from the people of today. In their day, they could see the rise of a great threat of the Assyrians and other hostile nations. Look around. Can we see the rise of any other great threats out there? Yeah. We're headed. I don't know if it's going to be before or after the next election. I don't, I'm staying out of politics. But I'm telling you, there's threats out there. There's saber rattling on all sides. What, what this world wants to see is what I saw when President Xi from China walked into the room of a total assembly of nothing but his people. And the people, every time he spoke, they were commanded to clap. They were commanded to stand. They were commanded to sit. And that's what the enemy of our soul wants for all of us. <clears throat> this great United States, if it doesn't wake up, that's what they're pushing for. Aren't you guys glad you came down here tonight? Have I cheered you up yet? <laughs> No, but we need the attitude of Micah. We need the attitude of, hey, we can't change that world. We, we have to change it, of course, if, with our, the way we act. We need to act like Christians. But we're not going to change the whole world. We can preach it, we can teach it, but we can't change that world. That world out there, first of all, they outnumber us. I'm talking about a world. Our, our way of thought seems so right to us. And I can sit here and talk about a this or a that. Sodom and Gomorrah was not, was not um, destroyed because everybody in there was of a homosexual nature. But everybody in there approved of it. And that's where we're at as a nation right now. We're watching sin develop right in front of us. We're watching people it flood into our nation to the point where pretty soon we will not have a nation. We can't keep feeding them. We're a great nation, but the goal of people out there is to break this nation. I don't know what's going to happen to this nation before the rapture. I really don't. I know that we're getting close. I know that next week, next Sunday, we celebrate 100 I'm sorry, 1,993 years since this church has existed. We're going to celebrate Pentecost. When we get to the year of 2020, I mean, sorry, 2030, the church will be exactly 2,000 years old. I believe, I believe in a seven-year period of time prior to that, it's going to come. And I believe that we were not called to wrath. Therefore, if we're looking at the 2,000 mark that Jesus talks about, even in the book of Hosea, saying in two days. Okay. No, I'm not setting a date. Don't get me wrong, everybody. I'm not setting a date. I'm saying we are so close. And we're seeing exactly what was going to happen. And in that day, when your walls are going to be built, in that day, the decree will go far out. In that day, you shall come from Assyria. In that day, I don't know if they're going to come from China. I don't know if they're going to come from Russia. I don't know where they're going to come from. I believe they're going to come, uh, come down from the north and hit Israel first. They're going to come from within our own country. Well, we're going to be destroyed from within our own country. I believe that's a fact. Uh, the people of Micah's day were no different. See, let me read on. So in that day, the walls that they built for protection aren't going to do it. And they trusted in those walls. However, those walls would not protect them from the Assyrians. Believe it or not, God was actually on the side of their enemy. Wasn't he? Who was bringing the Assyrians down there? Who was whispering in their ears, go down and get the people out of Israel? It was God. He, he boldly states. And, and in fact, the whole, all the minor prophets, all the major prophets have been, were prophesying, hey, it's going to be God who's going to be bringing this judgment against you. Wake up. 
Many times we forget that the God we serve is also a God of righteousness, uh, of righteousness, and righteousness involves judgment. In the end of all prophecy, God and his plan will prevail. Those who are his will live with him for eternity. Even though he brought judgment against his people, he will one day resurrect this very nation that he has judged. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Daniel looked out and he said that his people will, at that time, your people will be resurrected. Everyone, from every tribe, will be resurrected. And then he went on to say, For then there will be a time of trouble, such as never been and will ever be again. Nation will rise against nation. So when are they going to be resurrected? During the great tribulation. Then the same words were spoken by Jesus, but it was spoken to the New Testament believer, that the very same words, the nation will rise against nation, there will be a time of tribulation such as never been or will ever be again, that's a period of time called Jacob's Trouble. It's coming to a world near us. And the difference is zero. God's going to judge this nation just like he judged his people. The difference is God's going to resurrect his people, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. What's that mean, contempt? In other words, they're going to come alive, they're going to stand for their judgment, and they're gone. <coughs> the rest of the world doesn't go through that until, of course, the great white throne judgment. I, I know I'm covering a lot of ground, but I know you guys know a lot of this. The day is coming when, the God, when God will judge the world in which we live. When that happens, when that happens, it will be his wrath being played out through the evilness of mankind. Make no mistake, it will be God who will be bringing the judgment. Who's bringing the judgment against the world in the great tribulation? Here's Revelation 6, 15, 17. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, I got one minute. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, and every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and the rocks of the mountains. By the way, how do we know this? Because God already saw this. He's, God is outside of time, looking down through the corridors of time. He's seeing what's happening in the very end of men. And he said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great is the day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Did you guys pick up on that? Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb. For great is, is the day of his wrath. But we were not called to wrath, we were called to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This will be continued on Sunday. Won't we be gone by this time? By Revelation 6? It depends whether you believe in a God who said one thing that's going to do another. Didn't he say to the Church of Philadelphia, because you have kept me, by the, this will be on the screen on Sunday, because you have kept me, uh, you have kept my commands and done these things, I forget God's word, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that's coming upon the whole world. To Paul put it in, in Thessalonians, he says, for we were not called unto wrath, but called to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one I printed out there. Will we be there? I don't believe we will because God said it. By the way, one time I did a thing on, on the rapture. I quoted 13 different verses why I believe in a pre-trib rapture. Some people don't believe in a pre-trib rapture. They believe that we're going to be go halfway through it. And when God begins pouring out his total judgment, uh, his wrath. But if you read the first part, there's a lot of stuff, bad stuff that goes on. And we see saints being executed, okay? And people say, so there's the church. No, I believe these are the tribulation saints, the ones that didn't go up. Because if you read Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it says, after these things, 
And what were we talking about before? We were talking about the church era, the seven churches of Asia, and we walked through them, remember? Church after church after church, and you got the church number six, Philadelphia. It's the only good church that he found. He said, because you've kept my commands, I will keep you. It's sad, because that means there's six churches out there that are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Are they really the church? No, they're not. Is this the church? First son of Baptist? We hope so. Well, the church of Philadelphia. No, not. I, I'd go out and change the name right now yeah. if that was the case. No, no it's not. No. The church is here. Yeah. You're either sold out for Jesus Christ and you're you're keeping uh, the verse in Titus uh, 2.13 in your mind that our hope, our great hope, okay, is not in the next election. Our great hope is in seeing our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've heard some generals talking that says if the United States doesn't wake up, we're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, I think the United States is, is going down. Yeah. I really do. I don't know if we're going to be gone before that. I think we are. I really do. Because I think that would begin God's wrath. Yeah, but we, we continue on Sunday with now the title of that one is The Reason for the, the Reason. Is that, for the, is that the page six, seven, and eight? I was, well, I was, I was, no, we're actually talking about Micah. Micah asked the question, Micah asked this question, who is like God? You know, and I just, I took off, who is like God? You know, I just start writing and writing and writing. That's next Wednesday. <laughs> <coughs> the next oh, still on? Oh, still on. Okay, well. So, so we only have three pages next Wednesday. <laughs> I'm not going to promise that. I had not quit writing yet. <laughs> it is good that I've written the good bulk of it. Because it's, it's right. In case he gets sick, he doesn't have to worry about so when, when I built the pantry with everybody, I don't like to use that when I built, but when we built the pantry, I I gave Monday and Tuesday to the pantry, so I wasn't able to do this, right. and I really missed it, but, you know, we watched those movies through that time, yeah. and I really, I got I got fed during that period of time, but uh, the, um, that's some good naps, but now, I like to get up, I just love delving into God's Word. I've been teaching this Bible study for over 30 years, and I get more out of it every year, every time. Sandy doesn't like it when I talk about how much I like the study. I, I love it, and and what are we doing here? We're digging for those gold nuggets, you know? Uh, I just don't want to just say, here's, here's what's happening in Micah's time. I want to see what does it mean to us here today? Hmm? You? She stays off camera. <laughs> oh, I don't have Pastor Don to pray as I am, so I'll just pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, while I'm thinking of Pastor Don, I, I just want to uh, lift up his trip with him and Linda. I, I pray, Lord, that he's having a, uh, a good time. I also lift up uh, Chris um, in his quick recovery. And, I know he's got a lot on his plate. Um, but Lord, I, I lift up the people in this town, Lord, that um, really love this Tony. Remember, he put his two cents in over there many times over there at the uh, pantry. Lord, he was a good man with a good heart. I don't know what, what happened. But Lord, I'm asking that your judgment goes forth if he was attacked. Lord, uh, be with the uh, magistrates, be with the sheriffs, be with the people, find out that what, what happened to our friend Tony. Yeah. So Lord, uh, as we leave tonight, I just thank you, Lord, for giving us a picture of the heart of a prophet. Thank you, Lord, that we too have that heart because you gave it to us. That we should not fear that was coming at us but we should just be aware because you told us so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.